So like, so like I was saying, so we've been on this discussion for a couple of weeks now, where we look into this topic saying machine learning applications. Call it machine learning applications, taking clue from past successful utilization or application while exploring the present and future possibilities. So we have taken ourselves through the past five uh, weeks or five videos we can see on our platform where we try to look at some of the possibilities. So as we move towards the end of this kind of exploration, so what we have, we are going to look at today is what I call the proof of concept. And after this, we are going to go into full-fledged uh, practical demonstration where we're going to pick uh, real life data set one on one. So we are going to solve it together here. So I'll be using my own personal data sets and some free available data sets online. And uh, whosoever also has data set, we can, and he or she wishes to, you let us demonstrate it, we can demonstrate it also to everybody. So that we want us to be able to also implement our own. Like I said, the principle is that machine learning for all. So it's not as difficult as people used to think. So I've had several stories of people who even paid money online, but at the end of the day, they had to withdraw because it was getting really tough. Yeah. So sometimes people like to make things tough so that they can respect it. But the fact remains, I see machine learning as a tool that should be available to everybody who is interested. So today, following what we have been discussing that uh, looking at the past successful utilization why exploring the present and future possibility we've discussed lots of possibilities so for those that join us for the first time i suggest that we can look at we can listen to those videos uh, but today we just look at brief proof of concept why do i call it proof of concept uh, and they are going to be just samples because there are so many that we don't have time to display everything. They say a proof of concept or POC is a way to examine or demonstrate the usefulness of a product or idea. So when we talk of machine learning as being the end thing, I remember the chief technical officer of some microsystem long time ago says, said that machine learning is the next internet. When you say something is the next internet, the next internet, we discussed this uh, explanation in one of our previous video extensively. It means that the next thing that is expected to revolutionize the world, to change the, the way we do things, just like internet did, is machine learning. Because internet is another revolution entirely. It changed the way we communicate. I'm, communicate, I'm communicating with you now from different parts of the world. Some people in South Africa, some in Saudi Arabia, some in America, some in UK, in Sweden, and also for other countries. What made it possible? Internet. So if someone, some years ago, I remember even when I was undergraduate, we used to talk about e-commerce, but it was theoretical e-commerce. I used to really imagine, how are we going to do e-commerce? Are you going to sell something you don't see? But then the rest is history. The biggest of businessmen today, they are online stores. You also can attest to that. So my, uh, the internet came to really revolutionize things. So when they study it, they look at the next thing that's going to change the world like never before is going to be machine learning. And it's already happening. So everything is being tied to it. It's a very big organization now. They tied any proposal for project is always tied that, okay, it must have machine learning concept. At least you must be able to display AI concept among which machine learning is the big guy there. But when you talk of AI, AI is a very big field. I explained this in uh, one of our few video, last videos. It's a very big field, but machine learning is unique in the sense that, for example, this is big AI. We have natural language processing. We have robotics. We have several other 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 area of artificial intelligence we can list and continue to list. However, machine learning stands out. Why? Because if you want to even develop good robotic system these days, you need machine learning to come and help you. 
If you want to develop a very good natural language processing model, you need machine learning. So machine learning has distinguished itself as being able to assist other AI products or AI fields to be able to perform optimally. So that is why machine learning cannot be taken for granted. So today, like I said, we're going to look into the proof of concepts. When I say proof of concept, Okay, that's very fine. So I can see one of our uh, members has volunteered that he has data set, which is good. So we are going to be demonstrating how can we use real life data set to solve our individual problems. We do it for that so that everyone will be able to do that, like I said earlier. Now, so the brief proof of concept we're going to discuss today is that when we talk about all these applications, they are, they are not just, they are not just uh, theoretical or just, wishful thinking no there are things that have been implemented some of them are now are under processing towards becoming uh startups by the way while some of them are being used in different laboratories and the lives so when we say proof of concept it is a particular poc outline how the product or idea we operate in a real world environment without expedition necessary for full development so this is the meaning of proof of concept. So without necessarily implementing it physically, I mean, you, are, you need a lot of money to be able to do that. However, in our own research world, our own proof of concept is getting a new idea out there and getting it published in reputable journals, not in journals that are often called uh, predictory journals, but reputable journals, peer review journals. Journals with impact factors that are re that respected that they will not publish any paper except after subjecting it to rigorous review process. And if your work can pass through it, then it means you have been able to convince the larger portion of the uh, of the research community that this idea really worth it. So this is what we by the proof of concept. We are going to sh show ourselves some of our uh, our colleagues' uh, efforts in this sense that led to publish, publication in reputable journals, some of them Q1, Q2, uh, that are highly ranked. Now, so starting with, we are going to look into some of the area whereby we went into PVT property predictions, PVT property prediction that is under oil and gas. So we have, this one of this foremost work we can all check it out later on details are available online so anybody cannot get any of the papers if you're interested in it you can contact me i'll provide my own author's copy for you we have modeling permeability and pvt properties of hell and gas reservoir using hybrid model based on type 2 fuzzy logic system which was published in neurocomputing so uh, which is one of the top most uh, computer science uh, journal. Uh, however, this idea tried to combine the idea of hybrid, we mentioned it before, trying to use type two fuzzy logic as the basis of that particular hybridization. So we also had another one called prediction of uh, correlation properties of crude oil system using type two fuzzy logic system. Also, this is in journal of expert system with application. Then we have uh, investigating the effect of correlation-based feature selection on the performance of neural network in reservoir characterization. So this was a very interesting work after due to the problem of cost of dimensionality we mentioned. We got data from uh, an, oil, an oil and gas firm, but the data said has so many features and very few samples. And when you run into that kind of problem, you need to do feature selection. And there are so many feature selection, but this idea was able to investigate very simple feature selection based on correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient, you can do it inside your Excel. In fact, we did it in the Excel. So it doesn't contribute any computational complexity to the system. It was done outside the system. And Correlation-based feature selection is very common, but people ignore it. They thought it's too simple. It's not going to work. So we 
put our flashlight on this and we realize that with this very simple principle, we were able to improve the accuracy of this particular project to a really very high level. So we now decide to call it investigating the effect of correlation-based feature selection on the performance of neural network in reservoir characterization. Because usually people think of very tough feature selection. There are several ideas of feature selection. For some of them, we take a lot of time, complicated, but it's a very simple idea. And that is why, like I said earlier before, always keep things simple. When you are solving a problem with using machine learning, keep it simple. Don't think of the complicated option first. Think of simple options. Sometimes we ignore the simple one. We go for complicated one and they cannot solve your problem. Because that is one of the things that is unique in machine learning. You have a data set. You don't go for deep learning directly. You don't even go for neural network. Try KNRS neighbor, the very simple algorithms. Try decision tree. If decision tree is going to work for you, why are you going for neural network? If KNRS neighbor will work, go for you, why are you going for deep learning? So we've mentioned this before that start with very simple idea. This, is, this was one of the things that was demonstrated in this work. So we also had in this still on the oil and gas reservoir characterization. We have the permeability prediction, which is another very important prediction here. You want to know if a particular oil well is going to be able to produce oil before you drill. Can we estimate the permeability ahead of time? We have here improved sensitivity-based linear learning method for permeability prediction of carbonate reservoir using interval type two for the logic system, which is, it was accepted then in the applied soft computing, which was the leading computer science journal at that point in time. We also have a hybrid model through the fusion of type two and extreme learning machine for modeling permeability prediction. This was an in information fusion. You see, sometimes when individual models cannot solve your problem, you might have to think of how can I combine two of them together or three of them or more? Because they used to say uh, the, when, when you are united, I mean, in a group, you can solve problem that individual in that group cannot be able to solve as individual, individually. So we took advantage of that principle here. And also we had a hybrid particle swarm optimization and support vector regression model for modeling permeability prediction of hydrocarbon reservoir. These are our successful applications that were able to solve the problem suggested by the client or just by way of research uh, inclusiveness. Now, then so that uh, like I, another reason why I, I, I call it, like I said, I call it a proof of concept is if it can work in other area. So I'm showing all, all these so that you can start thinking about your own field, your own idea that is very much possible. If it can work in all this area, we are trying to show us how, why is it not going to work for your own field of study? So definitely either you have been doing it, but it doesn't work. Maybe we have been using the wrong approach. So which I hope with this particular kind of uh, forum, you have the opportunity to learn the correct thing that you are supposed to learn and be able to implement it. Now, so those are for oil and gas, and there are still several of them. We just pick samples of them. That's why I call it sample. I say sample successful previous applications. Now, this is nanomaterial application. So we can see the title of that particular publication was Functional Networks model for rapid characterization of thin films, an application to ultra thin polycrystalline silicon germanium films, films. So this paper came out of one of our friends, now a professor. So who was at that point in time was doing his PhD and was in Brussels for the, some of the, for a kind of a collaboration on nanomaterials. So when he came back, then he had some of this particular issue, this issue we discussed that how can machine learning be used in this area? That is Professor Asafa. Then we have Dr. Denino and myself. So it was, that was, it was, a, it was able to, we, are, we were able to solve that particular problem. The, the idea is a, 
you can able to, you can we were able to generate faster characterization, achieve excellent accuracy, and bypassing the risky procedure in the conventional techniques for the characterization of this nanomaterial. As you know, when you talk of nanomaterial, these are materials that operate at a very, very micro minimum. So at the nano level of size, but they're very powerful if we can take advantage of them appropriately. So it was a very successful, one of the very successful application in the area of a nano material at that point in time. And we have a couple of other efforts in that respect. Then we have the membrane technology. Membrane technology, this is a, we call it prediction of plasticization pressure of polymeric membranes for CO2 removal from natural gas using support vector machine. This has, is an, a, a journal, one of the very topmost journals in chemical engineering with 8.74 impact factor. So the idea, one of the author actually was on his PAD at that point in time, gathered this data from the laboratory. They tried to convince this journal that their work really worth it, but they couldn't guess it through until we were able to go into machine learning and try to see, can we incorporate machine learning to this nice idea? And we we're able to come up with a very successful prediction system that convinced the editorial board of this very highly selective journal to accept that particular paper. So if it could be accepted by this paper, that is why we call it a proof of concept that this concept can actually work for your own area of interest. Then we have areas related to clean and renewable energy, see on that material. So we had, one of it was a, like modeling the band gap of semiconductor materials, which are widely applicable in solar energy. So usually when you generate, when you generate energy, you, you say you renewable energy either through the wind or through the solar, it's not just the amount generated, how can you make sure that these generated energy are conserved? So when you are transmitting the energy from one place to another, you need material that will prevent loss of those energy. So a lot of research work are being encouraged in this area, among which we were able also to come in and see what we can do. So one of it here is computational intelligence method of determining the energy band gap of doped zinc oxide semiconductor. So yeah, investigation was carried out on the effect of annually temperature on the band gap of doped zinc oxide. It also investigated the effect of preparation condition on the doped zinc oxide semiconductor as possible material in this uh, sense. We also have modeling the energy band gap of doped titanium dioxide semiconductor using homogeneously hybridized support vector regression. So homogeneously hybridized support vector regression means hybridizing them using different form of support vector machine. They are the same, they are the same algorithm. When you use different algorithms, then it become heterogeneous and they have their own advantages and disadvantages. Now, so incorporating also gravitational search algorithm of fiber, fiber parameter optimization. So they were able to estimate the band gaps and they are very close to the experimental value. This is the idea because some of this material science, you have to be in the lab to be able to estimate the band gaps. You have to set up experiments after several days or weeks, then you have to monitor and then take the reading. But we're able to have a system that can predict on the go. And the prediction is very close to the experimental data that we had from the past, which means instead of staying so long in the laboratory, so scientists now can use machine learning to actually predict and rely on those particular prediction, provided the model have been correctly trained and necessary uh, effort taken to make them accurate. So we said the developed models circumvent experimental stress that is involved in determining the band gap of dope titanium uh, dioxide. See there are a lot of procedure, experimental stress that you have to pass through before you do this. But with this particular kind of very simple system, 
then it could be installed in any laboratory who is wishing to take it and they could use it to actually to predict so so that you don't need to waste a lot of time passing through stress and then you can still be able to get what you are looking for now so we also have the computational intelligence method for determining the energy band gap of zinc oxide yeah so this is what we mentioned this is just an highlight of it it was based on the gap uh, band gap characterization we investigated the effect of annealing temperature investigated the effect of preparation condition as also the results agreed excellently with the experimental value because when you this is regression problem you know we have classification and regression problem regression problem is more difficult to solve which is regression is when you are predicting real values so yeah the value experimental value is 2.65 2.67 maybe we are able to predict it as 2.5 something five for five six which is very close together there are situations whereby we are able to even predict almost the same value, C3, C5. So the more closer you are to what you are expecting, then the more the reliability of your models. So, and then experimentally, what you, usually when you do this kind of prediction for regression, I discussed it earlier, one of the ways for you to show that your work is really worth it is to try to plot, try to plot on the same graph, the predicted value, this is experimental value, you can see, plot it against the estimated value from your model, from the machine learning model. So you can see here, this is the black spot here means the experimental value, the red portion is the estimated. You can see that a lot of overlap. You can see a lot of overlap between the experimental and the predicted value. So if you're able to have this kind of system, definitely it could be reliable. So the same thing goes for this. Even this one is still acceptable. You see? So we also have others. So you have to do validation, get as many data as possible, and then try to test if your model is really working. So are we really able to predict values that we overlap or close to overlapping with the experimental value? So when we do a lot of validation and we're able to have this kind of reliable output, then we can be able to go back to the laboratory and say, okay, instead of wasting so much of this time, then why don't we use this system to do the prediction? And it's very important, especially in industrial application, where a lot of experiments need to be carried out and the time is not there. So why don't we invest in developing a very excellent machine learning model that can assist us in such industrial uh, industrial application where time is an essence. Now, so still then on the clean and renewable energy, we also have incorporation. Yeah, we have key contribution in magnetic refrigeration technology. We have we have for alternative source of energy for refrigeration. So we have incorporation of GSM, GSA in specific based linear learning method, neural network for enhanced estimation of magnetic ordering temperature of manganese. So here we investigated the doping effect of some dopants of magnetic ordering temperature and investigated using the developed model. And we're able to get really very excellent results. What got accepted in International Journal of Intelligence for the systems. We also have the modeling of magnetic cooling power of manganese-based material using computational intelligence approach. So we want to see what is the effect of dopan on relative to the cooling power of this kind of uh, material. So that because these are some of the area, one of the new areas of refrigeration alternative to the classical one that people are used to. So again, in the area of superconductivity, which is persistent energy transmission with zero energy loss, we also had opportunity to work in some of the, in, the, some, in this area where we have computational intelligence approach for estimating superconducting transition temperature of disordered MGB2 superconductor using room temperature resistivity. So we say that the advantage of this is that the developed model can easily be incorporated into resistivity measuring equipment. So, so that machine learning can support the resistivity measuring equipment to be able to get accurate 
may or may not. Another one here is support vector regression approach of modeling the superconducting transition temperature of borocarbide based superconductors. So here, the influence of manganese on transition temperature was investigated. So what is the effect of it on the transition temperature? And the effect of transition metal, platinized, and the actinide on transition temperature of some of these materials, and also the influence of them on the transition temperature of were all investigated in this particular work. And then one of the recent ones in this area that we did work on also is uh, in 2020, not long, long, just recently. So we have uh, extreme learning machine approach of modeling the superconducting critical temperature of doped MGB2 superconductor. So also in the area of uh, renewable energy application. So like I mentioned before, I personally got interested in this area after the, the there was an, a little initiative between the Saudi Arabia government and the British government to come together to see how machine learning could be used to strengthen the renewable energy research. So it was a collaboration part. So I happened to be part of the team. So we had a couple of days uh, research there together in the Techno Valley. We had a lot of options were discussed on how do we move this kind of idea forward. So after that, we've had the opportunity of making some of these uh, research uh, out, out, outputs. Now, Going further, we have key contribution in other significant but useful applications also. For example, modeling of auto ignition temperature of organic energetic compounds using hybrid intelligence system. This was published in the process safety and environment. So the idea is uh, usually there are some organic energetic compounds that are normally used in, in, the, in the industry, in the production process, they are normal. However, can we, I, can we, are we able to identify the auto-ignition temperature? At which temperature can they become auto, can they auto-ignite? Which are very important information that they need to know, depending on the kind of application being subjected to. We also have the estimation of the minimum ignition energy of explosive chemicals using gravitational search algorithm based on support vector machine. This is also in the Journal of Loss Prevention. So there are some compounds usually in the industry. They are useful compounds, but if the temperature goes beyond the normal, then they can become explosive. They can turn explosive. So we don't want them to get to that temperature. So if you want human being to monitor the temperature, maybe he fell asleep, maybe there will be a pretty big disaster. So why don't we have an embedded, embedded machine learning system that can monitor the temperature and then raise alarm once the temperature is getting closer to that, to that, to that particular uh, explosive uh, temperature in order to prevent disaster. So that was the import of that particular kind of research. Uh, in the humanity and then try to make things work as we have. So we also actually have it in the in the, there's this work called Sentiment Analysis of Cruises in Saudi Arabia on social media platform using machine learning algorithms. It published in Journal of Big Data. And this journal happened to have impact factor of 11, some of the top journals, top most journal in, the, in computer science related to AI. So the idea was uh, recently that are some cruises that are coming into Saudi Arabia for picnic and so many other stuffs. So you know, some of our students gather this data to see it, to understand the sentiment of people towards this particular kind of a system. And we're able to use the <clears throat> several algorithms were actually combined to achieve the system. And of recent, one of our member in this forum, Dr. Faisal, actually led this particular interesting research. So we have prediction of generalized anxiety, prediction of generalized anxiety. So prediction of generalized anxiety 
prediction of generalized anxiety level during COVID-19 pandemic, a machine learning based modeling approach. So we all know the challenges of uh, COVID-19 when the lockdown became so long, a lot of people suffer from anxiety, depression. So I think this was one of their work. This is from public health uh, research team. So able to, they came up with the idea, they collected a lot of data from people and the data was actually successfully analyzed using machine learning uh, approach and uh, what got published or present. And it's really very one of the very recent and interesting work related to medical intervention. So if we can predict the anxiety level of people, hopefully if they need help, we can be able to quickly approach them for help before it goes into depression and problem setting. Now, so we also have a, another one in the area of support vector machine for predicting the compressive response of defected 3D printed polymeric sandwich structure. So this was a real life data from one of our friends. So uh, Dr. Kwame Mustafa in Malaysia. So then collaboration with some of our team here, we're able to come up with how do we model this particular kind of 3D printed polymeric sandwich structures. And then the idea came up. So one of our leader here, and one of the team lead of the, the chemical research team in this forum also, I mean, this our platform led this research work called the demosification of crude oil emotions using iconic liquid, a computational intelligence approach. So also just January 2020 and host of others, several what we can continue to lease. So the idea is that we want to, I personally want to kind of encourage us to take it beyond just listening and then let's move towards seeing how can you use it in your own area? If it can work for someone in some area, it can definitely work in your own field. So there's no need to be skeptical about it. So these are other contribution from machine learning based framework for construction delay mitigation, general information technology in construction, and I would really like to have here to encourage all of us there. You don't need to be a computer science guy. No. You see, this, this is Dr. Moise. He's an architectural engineering person doing his PhD UTM Malaysia. And I happen to be his co-supervisor. So he work on machine learning, using machine learning to solve a lot of problems in the area of construction delay for high-rise building. Within two and a half years, he was able to defend his thesis. And just a few days ago, he actually got the best graduating student in the old of UTM for this particular year because of the, the level of publication he was able to have and this standard, this how standard the work he did. He is not a computer science, but used to sit down with me a lot. We used to discuss machine learning, how to make it and how to do it. The rest is history. Very hardworking. Of course, he's also a scholar. So yeah, which means it doesn't play with whatever it does. So with dedication, we don't need to be a machine learning, we don't need to be a computer science guy before we can implement a lot of successful machine learning uh, algorithms. So he did a lot of work that I'm personally also very much impressed in his work. So the pattern of his writing. So we have several work here. You can see this one is uh, developing a machine learning model for predicting the construction duration of tall building. How long is it going to take to construct a particular tall building? So we also work on a cost estimation model for the tall building. So we concentrated on tall building, high rise building, because this is becoming very common. And a lot of them fail because they couldn't estimate the cost accurately. And also of others, we also work on machine learning model for delay risk assessment in tall building project. And host of other, within two and a half years that I did this PAD, I think two years, two and a half years, he has so much, so much uh, research output that actually qualify him to be pronounced as the best graduating PhD student in that university. And this is one of the top 200 universities in the world. Now, and then key contribution in other areas, because this is my medical application area, which I often summarize. 
Another very one I want to mention before we call it a day here is one by our professor, Professor Abubakar, my Nigerian colleague here. We work on computational intelligence based model for diarrhea prediction using demographic and edge of a data. This is actually Nigeria data. See, he got this data. We use machine learning to be able to predict successfully that if there's going to be outbreak of diarrhea in a particular part of the country, also a particular person is going to suffer from it based on demographic and X of A data. How many people are sitting in the house? Which kind of toilet are they using? How many people sleep in a room? Do they have net? Simple question that they used to have asked from people. So these data are taken from the World Health Organization system and they were able to work it out. And very interesting for me, actually. So at least taking back to my own base and try to see how to solve some problem there. And also other medical related prediction. This one is uh, the early diagnosis of thyroid cancer using computational intelligence techniques, a case study of Saudi Arabia data set. So also published in computers in biology. So the idea is people get sick, but usually the sickness at the early stage can be easily cured, but people don't know until it is late. So this is the idea about some of this area of prediction. So uh, that's why my own idea is uh, there are a lot of predictions that are not necessary. I, part I personally partake in what I call ethical predictive solution ethical predictive solution. So I don't know if there's anything like that already. That is predictive solution that can, that can support people. Just like you have hacking, you have ethical hacking, you see, to solve problem, not to create problem for people. So can we come up with machine learning solution that can make life easy for people? Why do we want people, why do we leave somebody to be sick for a long time without knowing? But by the time the complaint will come, they'll say it is too late, it is last stage. So can't we diagnose them earlier? The fact remains, you can't send everybody, you cannot send everybody to the lab that you should diagnose them. It's not possible. It's impossible, by the way, that, okay, everybody should be sent to the lab so that doctor can check them to be able to know early if they are sick or not. This is impossible. The manpower is not there. Okay, why don't you make use of machine learning? So this is the idea. This is the idea that, okay, let's have a machine learning system that, you have access to it through online. You have access to it through your mobile. You have access to it if you go to the clinic for any medical checkup, once your lab result is out, the machine learning system will run your lab, your laboratory test to check for possible diseases, all chronic diseases. And if there's any positive matching, an alert will be sent to the appropriate center to follow up with that person to be able to check early so that we don't wait for problem to really strike before we nip it in the bud. So this is just the major advantage, uh, major summary of some of my inroad into the medical area and some other areas that I see people suffer a lot in laboratory for several days, only to pick up two, three sample reading. Why don't we use machine learning to solve this problem and make life easier? So I've done that for some chemistry professors who are interested, and I want to believe they are also very much possible in other areas. We've also had application in civil engineering. Yeah, it's construction and so many other ones. And strength of material after building the, what do you call it? The overhead bridge, we want to see how, how strong it is and so many other area of application that we can actually look into. So I would recommend us for further details on some of the related words, we can check up uh, some of the lists you could got in here. I'll share with in our platform. Because we we'll check our research gate, and we are also free to contact me personally on these emails in case you need any of these copies or for whatever clarification that might come. And uh, finally, as I used to say, the, the fact remains that uh, I told us machine learning, all these all these stuffs we've seen use the same principle. It does it vary from one problem to the other. You see. You have to start from the simple one to the complicated one. Whenever you have a problem to solve, try the simplest one. Try to see if it's going to work. If it doesn't work, then you move gradually. So we don't just jump to starting at very higher level. That's how we say there's no free lunch anywhere. 
So we have to keep checking. And machine learning is not a dogma. It is a tool. So you cannot really be sure which one is going to work for you. So you have to check, experiment, and keep trying different options until you get through with one. Of course, as you continue to work on machine learning, you'll be building your experience that me seeing the data, you have an idea of what options can I go for immediately. But even at that point, don't trust your option too much. I mean, your experience too much. Try to let the data speak. This is my personal opinion always. Let the data speak. Because sometimes, oh, we have done this before. This is what worked. That's what, what worked for us. It might not work on this new data. Always let the data speak. Put the data into the system. Whatever output you, you have, you optimize. You double check and see how you can make it better. Otherwise, that will, you, might be able, you might not be able to get the expected thing you are supposed to get in the system. So I believe it's a good place to stop for the day. So showing us some of the, what I call proof of concept that this system can work for you. If it can work in some of these example we have given, definitely it can also work in your own individual areas of uh, uh, practices. So that's why I've said, try to identify your interest in your own area. Next is get data. Yeah, last time I said we should send some people submitted their own, while some are yet to submit. So we'll be get, we are getting there now. So starting next time, we are going to start seeing how can you deploy it practically now? How can you investigate? How can you solve problem practically using this particular match? What are the procedures you have to take and which platform you have to use? So we are going to clarify this for ourselves uh, by the grace of God by next week. So till then, as I say, thank you for listening. And if we have a few questions, we can take some questions before we call it a day. Once again, thank you. And I wish you all the best. <laughs>